All right, now that we have the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know how to find the area under the curve. That will allow us to find areas of um, regions that you see on a graph. Uh, and usually you just use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area. You know, if I wanted to know, say, what is the, uh, if I have some function like this, f of x, and I want to know, here's one, two, three, what's the area of this right here? Well, that is just the area under the curve. So this area is straight up equal to the integral from one to three of f of x dx. And you do this using the fundamental theorem of calculus like we did last time, and it's typically pretty easy to do. Um, some kinds of regions, though, can be more complicated. Let's, um, let's try a different, uh, a particular example. Okay, here is my example. This is the curve y equals x squared minus 1. Sorry if you can't see that. Come on now. y equals x squared minus 1. All right? It looks like this, and I want to find the shaded area. Okay? Now, this is slightly uh, tricky. Let me just say it's not, unfortunately, it is not equal to the integral 0 to 2 x squared minus 1 dx. All right? Why not? It's because this part here is below the x-axis, and this part here is above the x-axis. It turns out when you do this integral like this, it's going to count this area as if it was like a negative number. This is like this would count in the integral. This would count as negative area. Uh, because remember, the area under the curve you measure by multiplying the little bitty widths times the heights, and the heights will all be negative here. The y values are all negative. So you're going to get negative uh, area measured over here, and that's going to get added onto this positive area. So actually the answer, if you were to do this integral, the answer would be some sort of number which is smaller than the true area because there would be some cancellation involved. And when I say find the shaded area, I do not want that cancellation to happen. So I want to know actually what is this area that's shaded right there. How do you figure that out? You got to treat the two regions separately. So we do the two regions separately. Uh, what I mean by that is first you go integral from 0 to 1, then you do the integral from 1 to 2, and you add them both together. So I'm going to do the integral 0 to 1 of this function, x squared minus 1 dx first, and then I'm also going to do the integral from zero to, uh, from 1 to 2, and we're going to add those two things together. Uh, the reason you got to do it this way is because, like I said, this answer is going to be negative, all right? So whatever I get here, it's going to be a negative number if I do it right. And then we're just going to make it positive and add it onto this number, which should uh, be positive. Anyway, let's try this one. You do the antiderivative. This is not hard. One third x cubed, the uh, minus x. All right, and then we're going to plug in zero and one. So I get one third times one cubed minus one minus one third times zero cubed minus zero. This here is one third minus one is negative two thirds, and that is all zero. So. The answer is negative two-thirds. Uh, remember, I said the answer was going to be negative. Yeah, I was right. That means this little piece here, the area is two-thirds, right? It says negative here. That's just because it's below. But the actual area, of course, is, is not negative. There's no such thing as a negative area. The area is two-thirds. All right, I'm going to find this area over here, and then we're going to add them together. Let's do it. Okay, the second area would be the integral from 1 to 2 of this function, x squared minus 1 dx. It's the same function, so it's going to be the same antiderivative. 1 third x cubed minus x. Plug in 1 and 2. All right? Plug in the 2. 1 third, nah, 1 third times 2 cubed minus 2. And then minus, plug in the 1. 1 third times 1 cubed minus 1. What is this over here? This would be 1 third times 8 minus 2. That's 8 over 3 minus 2 minus. This is 1 third minus 1, which is negative 2 thirds. Okay, keep going here. 8 thirds here minus 2 plus 2 thirds. All right, 8 thirds plus 2 thirds is 10 thirds. 2 is 6 thirds, so that would be 4 thirds, I believe. All right, so this area is 2 thirds. This area is 4 thirds. All right, so what's my final answer? The total area, I'll just write my answer down here. Total area is 2 thirds plus 
four thirds, otherwise known as six thirds, which is two. The answer is two. All right, the complete area here is two. This is made, you know, somewhat tricky because of this crossing right here. All right, you have to treat the two parts separately. Okay, that's how we do it though. Let's try another example where uh, uh, something that makes this problem easy is that I, I showed you the picture, all right? Sometimes I would just give you the formula and make you come up with the picture yourself. Let's try one like that. Here's another example. This time, like I said, I'm not gonna draw the picture for you. You gotta figure it out. Find the area bounded between the x-axis and this here parabola, all right? x squared minus 3x. Um, and I didn't give you the picture, okay? The thing is, with this one, it's uh, it's a little tricky because, because I didn't give you the picture. Um, just because you know something about parabolas, you know this is a parabola because it's a, it's a square, so, and it goes up because the coefficient in front of the x squared is positive. So it's a parabola going upwards. If there is any area at all, which there is because I'm asking you this question, that means, you know, the parabola looks something like that. And what I'm asking you about is this area right here. So it's going to be, the area will be the integral from something to something of x squared minus 3x. The question is, what are the somethings? All right, what are these two points? I didn't tell you the equation for this function. So how would you figure out what are those two points? You've got to find the x-intercept. These are called the x-intercepts. Those would be the points where the y value is zero. The x-intercepts. This is where y equals zero. How do you find those points? You set y equal to zero and solve for x. So you go zero equals x squared minus three x. Solve for x. Hopefully I will get two answers and they will be these two numbers. That's what I'm gonna put here and here and then we'll do the integral. Uh, what do you, how do you solve this? This is a quadratic so you should factor it. It's already set equal to zero. So it's zero equals x and x minus three like that. And then you split this up, x equals zero or x equals three. And those are the two numbers. Here they are. Uh, it doesn't look like that on my picture because I just made this picture up out of nowhere, right? That means these values right here go here and right there, zero and three. All right, let's do that integral then. All right, those two numbers were zero and three. So we're gonna integrate from zero to three and then what the function was, x squared minus three x dx. All right, now let's do it. This is the easy part now. Uh, the this, this setup is, is uh, the, you have to think a little, but now you just do your fundamental theorem of calculus. One third x cubed minus three over two x squared, plugging in zero and three. Plug in the three, one third times three cubed minus three halves times three squared minus one third times zero cubed minus three halves times zero squared. That's all zero. What is this over here? This is one third times 27 minus three halves times nine. Usually I would just leave this as my answer, but actually I wanna, I wanna see what the number is just to uh, demonstrate something. One third times 27 is actually nine minus three halves times nine is uh, I guess 27 over two. This being 18 over two minus 27 over two is negative nine over two. Anybody out there shocked? that I got a negative answer. I said the area, this was supposed to be the area, right? But actually you should not be shocked because this is area below the x-axis, which I just said before will be measured as negative. So my final answer, the true area is nine over two, not negative nine over two. That, that doesn't make sense as an area. All right, the true area is nine over two. All right, there's one way that this kind of a problem could get more complicated. And that is, this time I said, find the area bounded between the x-axis and this curve. Sometimes I just, um, I will not draw the picture and also I will not uh, say bounded by the x-axis, whatever. I'll just say the area from this x value up to this x value. Let's try one like that. All right, one last example. Find the area between the x-axis and this curve y equals 2x minus 14. 
on the interval from 6 to 10, okay? Now, this looks like a line, right? So really, you know, I don't know, this line maybe looks something like that. From 6 to 14 is what I want. And I want this area, all right? That actually looks deceptively simple. The problem is this line might not actually look like that. It might look like this. Uh, here's 6 to 14. Maybe this line looks like that, right? And so the area is actually negative. That wouldn't be so bad, but um, here's sort of a worst case scenario. What if the line goes like that? Then actually the area splits in two and we have to do two separate integrals. And you'd have to figure out where exactly is that point so that I would know how to split up the integral. Uh, that's what uh, is going to happen actually in this example. So if you look at the, the problems in the book about this, they say, find the area between the x-axis and this, and blah, blah, blah. And it says specifically, check the values to make sure the curve does not cross the x-axis. And if it does, you've got to do something special. Um, so how would we know if this curve crosses the x-axis inside of this interval? You do the same thing that we did uh, in the previous example, and that is you look for x-intercepts. All right? We only care if there are x-intercepts inside of that interval from 6 to 10. Did I say 14 over here? I wrote 10. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, let's do with 10, though. So it matters. If there's an x-intercept between 6 and 10, then we're going to have to split it into two integrals. There could, uh, you know, in general, there could be several x-intercepts between 6 and 10, and you'd have to split into several pieces. Not going to happen in this example because that's a line. Anyway, what are the x-intercepts, uh, if any, if there are any, uh, what do you do? You set the y equal to 0. So 0 equals 2x minus 14, like that. And then we solve for x. Put the 14 and the 2 x. So x equals 7. There is indeed an x-intercept between 6 and 7. So what your strategy is, you split the integral, or split the interval, that is this interval from 6 to 10, at every x-intercept. In our case, we have one x-intercept, and then you add the integrals, or uh, let me say, add the areas. You know, some of them might be positive, some of them might be negative. You compute the integral, you make all the answers positive and add them together. All right, add the areas. Okay, so the x-intercept is at 7, so this integral from 6 to 10 is going to get split up 6 to 7, and then separately 7 to 10. Let's do them. Okay, the first piece of the integral is 6 to 7, the integral 6 to 7 of 2x minus 14 dx. Let's do the integral. It's not a hard one. You get x squared minus 14x plus, not plus c. Now you go plug in 6 and 7. Plug in the 7. 7 squared minus 14 times 7 minus 6 squared minus 14 times 6. This you can put in your calculator. I did, and I get negative 1. So that means the area of the first piece is 1, right? This is area below the x-axis, so it was negative. Okay, the second piece is integral 7 to 10. Same thing. All right, the same antiderivative. So you don't really have to think about that too much. From 7 to 10, plug them in. 10 squared minus, I forgot the x. 10 squared minus 14 times 10, come on now, almost done here, minus 7 squared minus 14 times 7. This one here I plugged into my calculator, I got 9. So the, the area from that part is 9. And my final answer, I add them both together. The total area is 1 plus 9 equals 10. And that's that. For real, that's it.